Hi, I'm Steven Leone from Mini Circuits Applications in Brooklyn, New York. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of performing some standard S parameter measurements using the EVNA63 Vector Network Analyzer. S parameters are an essential and routine measurement performed in RF and microwave test labs at all stages of product development. In this video, we'll be measuring the S parameters of a Mini Circuits bandpass filter and take a look at the group delay and port impedance formats. Before we get started, feel free to take a look at the other videos in the series covering the initial setup and calibration process. We can start by powering on our EVNA, connecting it to our PC, and opening the EVNA Studio software. As always, let the device warm up until the temperature indicator turns green. Prepare the test ports of the EVNA for your specific device under test, or DUT, by using the appropriate connector savers, cables, and adapters. My DUT has two SMA female connectors, so I want to make sure that I have two male SMA connectors at the measurement reference planes. Prior to calibration, it's often a good idea to look at the frequency response of the DUT in the measurement software using the default factory calibration. This is in order to determine the optimal values for your sweep settings. When the DUT is connected, you can set up the measurement type and sweep settings. To view insertion loss, select response measure S21 in the EVNA Studio front panel. Now we can enter our sweep settings. The EVNA's full bandwidth is appropriate for this device, so we can use the default start and stop frequency settings, which are 300 kHz to 6 GHz. I'm going to increase the number of points to get a better resolution measurement. For high throughput applications, you can also reduce the number of points for faster measurement speed. In this case, the filter has rejections better than 90 dB at the low end, so I want to change the IF bandwidth from the default 10 kHz to 100 Hz. As a rule of thumb, every factor of 10 decrease in the IF bandwidth results in roughly 10 dB reduction in the noise floor. You can see how the noise floor reduces to a level that's closer to the actual rejection of the filter. As a reminder, keep these four settings the same through calibration and testing to avoid adding interpolation errors to your measurement. At this point, we're ready for calibration. I'll be doing a full two-port calibration for the best possible accuracy. Check out our video on calibration to review the full calibration procedure. Once the calibration is complete, connect the DUT to the EVNA ports. Let's perform our S parameter measurements first. We want to display all four S parameters, S11 through S22, in the same display. So I'll increase the number of traces to four and assign S parameters to each of the traces from the measure menu. I want to show the transmission parameters separately from the reflection parameters. So I'm going to change the trace layout to the vertically stacked option here. You can move the traces to the desired window by dragging and dropping the labels at the upper left of each window. You can adjust the scaling through the VNA front panel menu. These controls will be familiar to users already experienced with traditional VNA equipment. We can save the data as a CSV file, S2P, or export a screenshot. S parameter files are extracted before any trace calibration is made and they're independent of trace format. The CSV will export formatted data only for the selected trace. We have several formats available to view S parameter data. Two popular formats are the Smith chart and group delay. We can view impedance by selecting the Smith chart R plus JX option from the format menu. You can also drop a marker to measure the impedance more precisely at any given frequency. Group delay is of particular interest for filter measurements and can also be found in the format menu. As group delay is only relevant in the passband of the filter, I'll adjust the scale and drop the marker to make a measurement at the desired frequency point. This simple demo just scratches the surface of the EVNA's capabilities. Be sure to check out the literature on our website for more information and be on the lookout for more tutorials in our library. You can also download the EVNA Studio software for free and run it in simulation mode to view S parameter files and explore the features for yourself. I'm Steven Leone, thanks for watching.